The headlines were horrific. The heartbreak behind the headlines was even worse. As the countryside closed down during the government's mishandling of the 2001 foot and mouth crisis, shoots were among many rural businesses hard hit. No movement on or off large tracts of rural Britain meant no shooting. Now there's a new horror on the horizon. So far it has been relatively small in scale, but it worries top game bird vet Alan Bainan. I think it's a constant threat. Obviously the risk is higher in the winter time due to the migration of the birds, um, which are bringing bird flu into the country. And certainly my perception would be it's an increasing environment. It's something which is getting more of a risk each year. Alan's practice looks after 3,000 shoots across the UK. One of them is Exmoor Shoot Mornicott, run by Charles Owen. Happily, the UK is currently disease-free, but Charles, too, is worried about bird flu. Bird flu could potentially stop shooting for half or most of the season, and so we have no chance of rescheduling any days, and you know, we've basically outlaid a huge amount of money and serve our clients, and there is no shooting. Where bird flu strikes, it closes all shoots in the area and the flock that's been hit is culled. Luckily at the moment we haven't been too exposed, but there have been a number of instances last year, particularly a game farm um, in the north of England, which you know actually had a, a clinical bird flu issue, which resulted in the removal of the stock uh, from the game farm. We've also had shoots which have been restricted from shooting because there's been bird flu outbreaks within a specific radius and that then stops that shoot from carrying on its activity during the shooting season. We probably had about a dozen outbreaks last winter altogether in different parts of the country. I'll bite a large number of those would have been small backyard flocks. However, there's still movement, they still present a risk, particularly to the bigger poultry units. So, so, so it, it is an increasing situation. As far as DEFRA is concerned, this is about securing the trade in poultry and keeping up the UK's great reputation as a farming nation. After the mistakes made by its predecessor MAF in 2001, DEFRA is quick to respond to a bird flu crisis. DEFRA, the government vets, take over when there's a, a clinical case of bird flu within an area and they set up two restriction zones. And if a shoot is within that radius, that 10 kilometres radius, uh, they will be asked to stop shooting uh, until all the information's been gathered so that the uh, virus doesn't disperse outwards into the, into the wider bird community. It could go on for several months, but it would be a minimum of, of 60 days, of two months really. It would be a minimum time I would, I would suggest. Bird flu, avian influenza or AI, when it next strikes, will come to us from overseas. Alan gives his view on the shoots most at risk. Close to estuaries where there's more waterfowl or wild birds coming in, um, would have a higher risk than the more inland areas. Uh, ducks are obviously quite strong vectors, so where you've got mixed shooting, duck shooting, duck ponds, allowing wild birds to come in, probably have a slightly increased risk. So we can start to quantify the risk in specific areas, but where and how many, it's very difficult to quantify, but it is a risk or a perceived risk, particularly to guns who are spending a lot of money buying a day shooting, which possibly could be canceled. And it could be canceled because of somebody else. So it could be a poultry farm, half a mile away from the shoot, which is restricted, which then stops shooting on your shoot. And you've got no control over that because it's a wild bird vectored disease. Uh, and that's the threat really, is the perceived risk rather than the actual risk at the moment. But I can see the actual risk increasing as we look forwards over the next five to 10 years. Plenty of shooters lost large sums during foot and mouth. Mornicott has decided to do something about that and has turned to insurance. At the start of the year, we're looking into bird flu and the, and the threats that it 
could pose and um, we've managed to find an insurance company that will insure all of our shooting at Mornicott, um, which gives the clients stability because they are shedding out a huge amount of money. They will get that money back if bird flu, if shooting ceases because of bird flu. And also from a state point of view, we've covered ourselves as well. I mean, most shooting contracts say that if a, um, a day shooting is cancelled um, because of something like bird flu um, through DEFRA, guns wouldn't get their money back, but as a business we would feel obliged to give them their money back. But obviously that puts us in an awkward situation. So, so I, think, I would say 95% of our teams uh, rebook every year, um, and I think they trust us to look after them and give them a good time, and that's the main reason that we've managed to find this insurance, I think, to look after them. The insurance package is called Shoot Protect. There is other shoot insurance available that covers bird flu, including a package from insurers promoted by Basque. Whether or not, as a shoot owner or a shooter, you take a look at the insurance available. One action you can take is to use car washes more frequently. But, you know, as a poultry vet going on to broiler and layer sites, quite often my car has to stay off site and I walk on and I change my boots before I go on, I change my clothes, sometimes I shower in and shower out depending on the level of biosecurity. When I go to a shoot, or certainly some game farms as well, there can be very low levels of biosecurity. We need to really start to focus on improving that for our own protection, really, to help ourselves. So I think, you know, I wouldn't suggest no loaders are going to wash the cars routinely, but, uh, but if somebody is moving across the country from one shoot to the next, it may be good practice to clean vehicles uh, uh, and boots between going between specific shoots if the threat is there. With vigilance, when it happens, we will be able to keep bird flu outbreaks small. For more about Shoot Protect, visit shootprotect.co.uk.